Okay, mate, so your business, um, I know there's a lot of strings to your bow. Uh, we'll talk about the... the uh, I thought you'd say strings to your guitar. Well, strings to you. We'll talk <laughs> about the Oz icons a little bit later. Uh, but you have a program called, which, I, which I've been fortunate enough to be a part of, Process Communication Model. What an amazing program that is, mate. You want to talk a little bit about how you got into that, and then we'll talk about what it is as we go. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, you know, I since I've been consulting with businesses, which has been since the year two thousand, or well, actually two thousand and one, I started. Um, I've, I've been every year upskilling myself in particular areas because for me, professional learning is a really important part. If I want to be be contemporary, stay contemporary, I've got to continue to learn. Learn. Learn, unlearn, unlearn relearn. relearn. That's yeah. my motto. So about 11 years ago, I was doing and writing a, um, a, an article for one of my clients, for an in-house magazine for one of my clients. And I wanted to do a bit of research around, uh, and it was on teamwork, uh, around the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster to put that in there as an example of some of the challenges they had. And I went onto the NASA website whilst I was looking, because I wanted to find out what the date of the the, the, the challenge the disaster was. Anyhow, I went onto the NASA website and saw a reference to process communication model. And then when I read more about it, I, I, I read that you know, it, 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 it talks to not just communication, but um, how you achieve a peak performance mindset, um, how you influence others, and a whole lot of these other, other benefits, which I thought, oh, this is quite amazing. And if NASA using it, then it must have a fair bit of uh, science behind it. So I booked myself in to do this process communication course, which was a three-day course. And uh, it was the most amazing set of uh, skills that I'd acquired in, in a three-day period that I've... It's funny you should say that because everyone that does it says the same thing. Yeah. I said it recently. We had Damon, right? Damon yeah. Lazarus. Yeah. You know, flipping out about it. And most of the people that, since I've been uh, involved with you, are just absolute advocates yeah yeah it was it's just amazing and and it, it, it evolved out of psychotherapy uh, a guy called dr taby kaler developed the concept and and uh, researched it and basically uh has used it as a form of psychotherapy for many years but but there's actually a a, a different ver and that's called process communication therapy but the process communication model is a a uh, set of skills that teaches you how to connect, communicate, and influence with people. Uh, and part of that is also understanding yourself, understanding what your triggers are, what your psychological needs are, what your strengths are, et cetera, et cetera. So there's this, there was this whole uh, swag of, of skills that I took away from these three days that I thought, well, this is amazing. To the point where I thought, well, I've got to do something with this. I've got to get accredited as a trainer in this. So I spent, the best part of the next uh, six nine months going through the different stages to get accredited, um, and you know, sort of ten years later, I'm running programs and courses and and embedding this into into what I do with businesses because it's uh, the skills that are all based on evidence uh, and have a proven track record. The skills are quite amazing and quite diverse and much much more than just communication. They're all about peak performance. Peak performance, and you've trained approximately 2,000 plus individuals in process communication since that time. And I know, I know how important you know this is for, for business. Maybe you can, um, let's start um, with the end in mind. What are the advantages with PCM for businesses? Well, if you want to create an environment where people are working to their strengths, uh, where people are, um, fully motivated and engaged, where people are communicating effectively, getting things done on time, where people are working well as a team. Uh, and there's so many, so many benefits uh, that all come back to how you as an individual and how you as an individual and you and you and you, all the people in the business, how they are addressing their psychological needs, addressing their, um, and working to their strengths, um, all that all that comes together in this perfect storm when people understand all the different facets of what this process communication 
can educate you on. You don't learn this stuff at school. That's the, the amazing thing about it. Communication. You don't learn it at, you don't learn how to communicate at school. You learn the fundamentals of English and speaking a language, but you don't most people aren't aware that there are four communication channels and six perceptions. A perception is a currency of language. And you use the wrong channel of perception as quite often is the case in day-to-day -day communication because people aren't educated on this, then you end up miscommunicating. The other person doesn't really understand what you're saying, doesn't follow through on what you're saying. And then you're complaining because the, the, the proposal was supposed to be on your desk this morning at six o'clock um, or on your email at six o'clock was, was not there, not delivered. Um, and you go back to the person, why did, oh, you did, I didn't know that, you didn't say that to me. So yeah. it's, it's quite amazing how often this happens and it can be attributed back to the fact that we are all unique individuals and unless we understand each other and each other's preferences, then it's difficult to communicate and engage in, the most, in, in an effective manner. So we talk about advocacy and, and I'm sure Damon Lazarus won't mind me saying this because I think he, he summed it up brilliantly and I, you know, I, I know you said we, Tesla, let's use that in the marketing because his statement was that PCM or process communication model is a co communication conduit to success. I mean, that's a pretty heavy statement, but when you look at a, a, a balanced individual, I often, now, now I know what, I'm not saying I'm the most balanced individual in the world, but I know it's given me a heck of a lot more balance in my life. And if I, if I can relate that to the high pressure of being in a corporate job where you've got so many different areas, particularly in leadership, where you've got to, you've got to be uh, switched on all the time and you've got to be um, communicating perfectly well in order to get the best out of your team. I don't know how they can do it without, with, without PCM. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they, they, they do, but if they knew what was on offer here, they'd all be snapped one up quickly because it's like a super, it's like being a, a super, uh, one of those um, you know, Marvel uh, yeah. superheroes, you know? Yeah, it, it's, it's like a Swiss army knife. Yeah. It's got so many uses, yeah. Uh, and, and that's one of the real key things that took, blew me away with PCM is that it, it, it has so many dimensions, but all of those are come back to giving you a greater awareness of yourself and an ability to regulate yourself better. Um, and and you, know, in the, you talked about the high pressure environment of the business world as in the 21st century. One of the challenges in a high pressure environment is people aren't satisfying their psychological needs. So when you don't feed your personality based psychological needs, then what happens is, um, you are more than likely to go into what's called a pattern of distress. And each of us human beings has a distinct, observable and sequential pattern of distress. Yeah? And that pattern of distress uh, keeps rearing its head when your psychological needs are not being met. And if, for example, the person who is the, and there's a lot of men in this category, that's really strong in the thinker personality dimension, these type of people, and there's six personality dimensions that are part of us, there's not six types of people, there's six types in people, yeah? And, but one of those is really dominant, yeah? And if the one that's dominant is this thinker one, uh, if you are, are, are not a, addressing your primary psychological need, and that is, that is the, 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 the need to uh, achieve and, and, and make best use of your productive time that that means i'm getting stuff done or if i say don't worry about all the details mate let's go and have a beer well that's Should right, be right. Well, that, that, right that, that frustrates me yeah don't worry about or it or if you don't right. if you don't get stuff done on time or i am, am am getting bogged down in this particular aspect here what happens i go into a pattern of distress what does that look like well first i'll go into a distress pattern first degree there's three degrees first degree where I'll start to overthink, overcomplicate, become a little bit agitated. I'll start to work harder, okay, the workaholic. I'll start to work harder. Then I'll slip down, if I don't get myself out of that space, by feeding my psychological need, I'll go further down. Because I'm go, saying, no, we'll get it done on Monday. Exactly. Mate. And then don't you know what I do? It. You idiot, how do you think we can do it? it? So I actually start getting frustratedly angry. Yeah? yeah. And I go into this space of frustration. And 
what happens is my clarity of thought goes out the window. It's a chain reaction, basically. And I go, and I go further down, and if I if I don't put myself out of that space into third degree distress, and that's really a space of despair where I'm just taking my anger out on other people. I'm attacking other people. I'm sacking people. I'm I'm uh, really in a space that I'm not thinking in at a, all. In an unresourceful state, and that's also affecting the people around you. Absolutely, yeah, it's contaminating the people around me. So we're looking to avoid that with with process communication. The process communication teaches us a set of skills how to manage ourselves and how to work with and influence others better. And there's a number of those different um, uh, personality traits. So we've got um, the promoter, which is which is me, by the way. And there's been some pretty harsh things written about us promoters, mate. Well, promoters are action orientated. They're adaptable. They're persuasive. They're charming. Um, they haven't all got bald heads, but um, but they are the type of person that gets stuff done, you know. And and if if I'm not going to be, and I'm working with you, and, we, and the other night, right, when we, we we got something over the line, and um, and I'm, I'm you know I'm waiting for you to come back and say well done, Tez, you know, so, and it left me hanging. So <laughs> yeah, so I was having a bit of a play with Teddy the other, with Terry the other night, in, in in because he's this type of person that wants. To actually feel this this adrenaline rush because Come that's because yeah. it's all about the thrill and he, he he hit this big target the other night and he was and he's the man like he is the man but I didn't let him know he was the man no because I was playing with him um, I'm, I'm and, like what doesn't he understand about we got this across <laughs> the line? but some that, that so there's that type of person but then you've got the other type of person at the other end of the extreme that's quite different to you all right so so what about if um, like you know as, as promoters we get a pretty bad rap right it's because we are you know let's go let's go let's go if it, when when something good happens I get a big low because I'm, I'm looking around for the next for the next thing that to bring the me next up. thrill because you're after a thrill this brings us to the point of existential questions right okay so the existential question there's an existential question that hovers over us as a human being and that's anchored in the dominant part of our personality yeah and the existential question there's six parts to our personality six types in us each of us has one of those parts that's dominant for the promoter the existential question is am i alive so I'm constantly chasing a thrill. Yeah. If I True. don't get that thrill, then what happens is I'll go into distress. So if if I'm not feeling that energy, that buzz, that progress, then what happens is I will go into my distress pattern, which can be quite destructive. So the existential question of the the the, the um, promoter, which is am I alive, is quite different to the existential question, for example, of the harmonizer, which is am I lovable. So those type of people who are really strong in that, they're your compassionate. Or the imaginer sense. who's... Or the imaginer is the existential questions, am I wanted? That They're the type of person that loves being told what to do, likes space to reflect and think about things, quite different to the space the imaginer wants, is quite different to the promoter. So you put a promoter and imaginer together, not... Well, if I was a promoter leader... Yep. And I, and I wasn't aware of the effect I was having on an imaginer... I'm not getting the best out of them right from the get go no. because we're we're across. You'd be too pushy, and, and and you're not. You wouldn't be giving them the space that they need to reflect because the imaginers are really creative. In, or, or sorry, imaginative. They can actually solve really complex problems, but they need some space to go away and and do that because the classic imaginer, um, who's strongest in the imaginer perception. Oh, sorry, imaginer uh, dimension, is that person when you ask them a question. They'll just take a brief pause while they're thinking of an answer before they respond. Yeah. So that type of person is processing stuff at a deeper level. And in teams, they are really valuable because too many of us, like yourself, and 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 well, me I would, I wouldn't, moment. I wouldn't stop. I, no, you, you just, know, I would feel the need to. Yeah, don't I have. I didn't have an answer. I'd just mask it. Yeah, that's right. I'd yeah. put a mask on, yeah, right, yeah. And, and pretend that I had the answer. Yeah, and then I'd march away and think, oh, I've got a bit better, better sort that that's out. Right. I'll go and check it out later. Yeah, that, exactly right. So, so the imaginer is that sort of person who, in a team environment, you would come to them last. If you're going around asking people for their ideas, you would come to them last because then you're giving them time to actually. To a aggregate their thoughts, and the imaginer's looking at me, thinking I'm an idiot, right? That, the imaginer, not that, he's not that smart. That guy, he's just the mouth. No, well, they, they're not necessarily judging you like that, but they're they're not 
they're not connecting, they're not talking the same language as you. Okay. Okay.